Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Social scientists argue that the reason for change is always in search of an improved status. Therefore, Zambians removed the colonialists in 1964 in search of self-rule in a democratic state in which UNIP provided for, seven, for 27 years rather until the MMD took over in 1991. After UNIP, three other political parties have held office in Zambia with the latest being the UPND. Opposed to the Patriotic Front who promised an infrastructure rollout and development, the UPND in their campaign of 2021 campaigned for what they would call placing Zambians at the center of its hold on power. The last 10 months down the line, the welfare of Zambians appears anchored only on the waiting game. If the IMF does not gift Zambia the $1.4 billion, then the UPND will not have any spending power to uplift this welfare of its citizenry. The UPND has assured Zambians constitutional reforms, which they opposed last year under the PF's Bill 10. More others like the socialists have accused the new donor administration of being pro-West on the international front and have reasons for concern on issues such as a formation of AFRICOM coming August. This is Costa. Good evening. My name is Costa Mwansa. I'll be back shortly. Welcome, just in case you're joining us live on DSTV 271. We're also live on GoTV's channel 99 and Topstar 110. You can also watch us on the go by downloading the Airtel TV app subscription free and watch through via also our Facebook pages, Diamond TV Zambia, on the live stream. My guest tonight is Socialist Party leader, Comrade Fred Member, to discuss economic prospects for Zambia, which way, you know, forward. Uh, Comrade Member, it's always a pleasure. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Good evening. It's 10 months of the New Dawn administration. Let's get straight into it. During one of my interviews um, prior to the you know, election of August, you described the patriotic front then as the ruling party and the UPND in opposition as Siamese twins. Is this still your opinion 10 months after the New Dawn in administration? I think I've been proved correct. When you look on the economic front, you look on the political front, the UPND is doing the same things the PF was doing. They are doing the same things they opposed. <coughs> they opposed tribalism, originalism, in terms of appointments to the public institutions. They talked about the high cost of living, they have perpetrated the same things. They talked about corruption, there is still corruption in this government. And at the rate we are going, they will dwarf the PF corruption at the end of their term of office. You make very strong, you know, allegations, Dr. Membe. Um, tribalism on the basis of appointments during every swearing in or every announcement i think president hijlema has been so clear that his is about putting zambians with competence first and obviously trying to look at gender parity what substantiation do you have yourself to not just have these as merely allegations but prove evidence with facts tonight you talk about tribalism you talk about 
the UPND being more corrupt than the PF. That is scary. That is daunting. If you look at the appointments to the public sector, to government, to parastatus, a pattern has emerged. That is very clear. I can talk freely about these issues because it's difficult for anybody to accuse me of tribalism. My, uh, my ethnic composition clears me of that. My mother is from southern and western provinces. I have seven, seven ethnicities in western province and one in southern province. My father is from northern and Muchinga. I have two ethnicities, they are Bemba and Ivisa. No one can accuse me of being anti-southern, anti-western. No one can accuse me of being anti-northern, anti-Muchinga. And I can speak freely about these issues. If you look at the composition today of key state institutions, just take our judicial system. The Minister of Justice is from the same region. The Chief Justice is from the same region. The, Sol the Attorney General is from the same region. The Solicitor General is from, from the same region. The Chairman of the Judicial Service Commission is from the same region. The Chairman of the Judicial Complaints Commission is from the same region. Are these not Zambians who are competent? It's not about competence. It's not what we were promised. <coughs> I remember we had a similar situation under Mr. Chiruba. Mr. Chiruba was under pressure to appoint Justice Weupe as Chief Justice. Mr. Chiruba refused. Said, I can't appoint Weupe as Chief Justice. The President is coming from Lapula. The Chief Justice is coming from Lapula. It can't happen. There was pressure to appoint Ephraim Chivwe as a Speaker of the National Assembly after the retirement of uh, Nabriato. Chiruba refused. He said there is no way we can have the Speaker and the President from the same region. Are you telling me there are no other qualified people, competent people on merit from other areas? Probably this is one you know, but also it goes again as you've picked in the judiciary. I'm just giving an example because this is what they promised themselves. The president is still on record and he continues to say that the entire 10 provinces of this country shall be represented on the basis of one being qualified, competent and being, you know, Zambian. Hasn't he tried to demonstrate this also, uh, Dr. Membe, with the backing that um, this administration is coming in on the backdrop that there was tribalism against in the appointments seen under the PF then, that these regions you mentioned, probably the western, the southern, the northwestern, were marginalized and in most cases relieved of their duties in civil service on tribal tags. Look, it's them who set up the criteria. They said they will have a government that represents all our people. They said that, didn't they? I'm asking, do you remember them saying that? Correct me if I'm wrong. They promised that. We are saying that's not the picture. That's not the picture. You can't have people from just one region of the country occupying the entire judicial system. And it's not only the, the people I've mentioned. You can also look at the constitutional court. The president of the constitutional court is from the same region. The deputy is from the same region. I don't have issues with the individuals. I'm simply saying this is not what they had promised. What are the dangers that make you raise these concerns? If I told these, Zam these are Zambians and they're competent, should we be concentrating 56 years after independence on a region where Zambian hails from? They were saying the same things when they were in opposition. They raised these issues. The Zambian people thought they would correct these issues. Is this the best way to correct those issues? Are they correcting these issues? They complained about it. If it was wrong under the PF, it must also be wrong under them. It wasn't just wrong for the PF to do that, it's also wrong for them to do that. If it was not acceptable according to them, 
when it was done by the PF, it's still not acceptable. And also, what message are you sending <coughs> if chief leaders of government go publicly and say provinces A, B, C were discriminated? Even in the distribution of fertilizer, this province A, B, C, D were discriminated. What message are you sending to our people? What message are you sending to our people? What are you telling them? You are simply telling them something that what is pertaining was not, what pertained was not acceptable. And the new dispensation gives them a better chance. But what are you telling those others who you say they were favored? How are they going to feel? And when they look around, those who you say were favored, there's nothing they have. The provinces that they were saying they were favored, which is Eastern, Muchinga, Northern, and Wapula, what is there? So These I, are the poorest provinces of our country. Let me just finish my point. Mm -hmm. These are the poorest provinces of our country. The poorest province of our country is Western province with 82.2% poverty levels. We know that the second is Wapula with 81.1%. The third is Northern Province with 79.7%. The fourth is Eastern Province with 70% poverty level. And then we have in the fifth place Muchinga with 69.3%. You have the Minister of Infrastructure goes on television, announces there will be PPs for roads in northwestern, western, and southern. Again, because they're giving a backdrop that these areas were underdeveloped in the last 10 years. Yeah. Let's look at the infrastructure. Let's look at the infrastructure. If you go to eastern province, what roads are in eastern province? Other than the, the road from the, the Rwangwa Bridge to the Malawi border, which is the Sadiq Road. Outside that road, what, are, what roads are there in Eastern Province? You tell the people there will be a road to Lukuru in Western Province under PPP. You go to Eastern Province, you say the, the road to Vubui is not economical. So are so you accusing this administration of delivering development on the basis of regional politics? Do, doesn't Lukuru need these roads? Um, I'm saying what they said themselves. Mm -hmm. These are things I'm asking, what, what are you creating? When you look at this in province, there are no roads. You go to Muchinga. What roads are in Muchinga? The Serenje Nakonde road is broken. And it's an international road. We are using that road for exports and imports. Northern province, what roads are there? The Mpikambala road is broken. The Kasama Luingu road is broken. When you check the balance sheet, Check the balance sheet. What roads? In northern, you go to Wapula. What roads are in Wapula? The Tuta Road is broken. The Mansa Chembe Bridge is broken. There's no road to talk about between Mansa and Chiengi. The only road is the one Mr. Sata left between Mansa and Luwingo. You go to Northwestern Province. There's a road, a new road from Chingola to Solwezi. There's still what you can say a broken road, but it's still passable but, from but Solwezi to, Mbe, to, Man, to, to Zambezi. Ten months of the UPND into power would be too unfair to start holding them accountable on projects such as roads. Uh, we are not holding them on, on, on what they have not done or done. Yeah. We are holding them on what they are saying. These are what they are saying. If you look at it, the whole country doesn't have roads. So, Even in the areas that they are so, talking about. I, I want us to tackle... So there was no region. What I'm trying to say is there's no region that was favored. Mm. You've spoken about tribalism, corruption, um, uh, and so on. It's a very unfortunate issue that we, we, we still have to discuss tribalism, you know, on the Zambian landscape. Um, th when the UPND came into, into office, they tried to call for a commission or an inquiry. Uh, you heard about it on the issue of um, those who were maligned or were unjustly, you know, uh, relieved. 
in the civil service uh, has this worked have they gone about it the right way the failed you know um, dialogue uh, then between political parties or the pf and the upnd to, to to stop violence to stop again this issue of you know voting against region it's sad enough again doctor that you bring this up just about 10 to 11 months after an election it's worrisome. Where are we going then as a country? Should we be having a Truth and Reconciliation Commission? What should be Conciliation Commission? What should be... ...the way forward to stop this ugly thing called tribalism? Problems are not solved by masking them. You don't mask problem if you want to solve, problems if you want to solve them. You talk about them. They spoke about the discrimination, the marginalization of certain areas of our country. Nobody stopped them. They have taken measures to try and were correct they right? that. They were right. They were right. There were some marginalizations in certain areas in terms of appointments, but not much more so in terms of distribution of the resources, because that doesn't show. The statistics that are coming from government itself, from a government agency, don't show that. But in terms of appointments, yes. Lists used to fly around of how many permanent secretaries come from this region, that region. They used to secretate them themselves. It was okay. Everybody abhorred that. So they went, they are on a record criticizing these things. They are on a record trying to correct this. It's not me who is saying certain areas of our country were neglected, were discriminated. They were saying that themselves. You have heard them say that, even in the distribution of fertilizers. But also they don't even take into account, you know, the realities. If you gave the same amount of fertilizers to Eastern Province and Western Province, you starve this country. You starve this country. The production cost of a 50 kg bag of maize in Western Province is the highest. Second is Northwestern, third is Southern. If you gave the same amount of fertilizers to Eastern Province and Wapula, you starve this country. My relatives in Wapula will just take that fertilizer into, into Congo. You have no food. A number of things have to be taken into account. And that's not the language to use. Once you start telling a certain region that they were discriminated as leaders, what are you trying to incul what spirit are you trying to inculcate in them? What feeling are you trying to inculcate in them? What about those you are telling that they were favored? They also look around themselves and see how were we favored? What do we have? The president's mm -hmm. message is preaching peace and unity. He says one of his biggest pillars and mission in his tenure is to bring back peace, harmony and unity amongst the Zambian citizenry. You say he's not doing this? Look at the prosecution system. Look at the administration of the, justice, the, the criminal justice system. Who is being arrested? The same things we used to oppose when the PF was in power, and rightly so, are being done. People are being arrested today, taken to Lukulu, where they don't have relatives, they don't know anybody, they have never been, transported in the middle of the night, as if you know it's treason they have committed, limited resources government has are spent on transporting one individual in the middle of the night to Lukulu. Immense resources are being used to transport one individual to Sorwezi. In the middle of the night, somebody is transported to Jinsari for prosecution. And those people are being acquitted. When you look at the drama that was there when they were being arrested, and what has become of them, is that a system we should ac accept? To continue, are we you, opposed that under the PF, and we oppose it now. Are you also of the theory, Dr. Membe, that this corruption crusade is targeted at a certain tribe? Are we not seeing that, from what you're saying, if the previous administration appointed only themselves from a certain region, and if they are found wanting, they must be brought before the law, regardless N of tribe? Nobody is, should be above the law. <coughs> Nobody should be placed above the law. Those who commit crimes must be prosecuted. 
but everyone is entitled to a fair prosecution to a fair trial to fair treatment if they deserve bond give them bond if they deserve bail they should be given a bail and this is happening if they deserve acquittal let them be acquitted and they should be tried before a court that they feel is impartial when you start to create an image of a court that doesn't appear to be impartial then you have a problem you have a problem let, let, I'm not saying no one should be talk about prosecuted. impartiality uh, uh, really and, and, and autonomy um, you've just mentioned here that despite some of these you know uh, prosecutions or some referring to them as persecutions one being arrested being taken to Lukulu being taken to Lazi and so on the judiciary seems to show its independence in that it offers or renders judgments that are not just in favor of the state and in this particular case you know those that are in the administration but we've seen another outcry on the uh, transfer of, 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 of magistrates uh, into different places and also the president at the recommendation of the JCC has relieved judges among them people like Judge Sande Konde, who yourself you yourself complained against to the JCC so is this administration not doing what is right as far as judicial reforms and really doing what is necessary uh, to do? You have heard complaints from those who are in power today about the decisions coming from the courts. You have heard them complain. Their cadres have gone to court premises to complain. And their complaint has been addressed. Magistrates have been transferred out of Osaka. I don't want to go into the details of where those magistrates come from. And where they do they been... come from according to your theory? But I had Justice Minister here last week and uh, his response is that there's nothing sinister because every administration that comes in or the hallmark of any change in, in, in administration, people are shuffled. They're not being fired. You know, why are people not complaining that these transfers or shuffles are happening in other ministries or sectors? Town clerks, PSs, why, why is there no complaint? You have party cadres of the ruling party go to the court premises and they demand that changes be made to the adjudicators and those changes follow if you were before those courts how would you feel you are arraigned and presented before those courts how would you feel would you feel secure would you feel you're going before an impartial court you would be worried and those who are going before those courts are worried so are you saying based on my question in that you are one of the people who has complained for example against certain members of the judiciary uh, among them judging Conde who's now been relieved is this not the justice you were asking for are, are you saying now that the judiciary is impartial because of regionalism I have not accused any judge of being impartial. All what I'm saying is the configuration of our institutions, the staffing of our institutions is not representing what our leaders were promising in terms of regionalism. They promised that. Tell me if they didn't. Tell me if they didn't. We are simply saying you promised this is not what you are delivering. You, you, you've also this evening made, again, what I call very strong allegations. How, Dr. Member, are you able to predict that the UPND, after five years or so, will come out more corrupt or will dwarf the corruption of the PF? You yourself and others accuse the PF of really being one of the most corrupt, if not the most corrupt administration that this country has ever experienced. Yes, they were. At that particular point, from the time we gained our independence to the time they left power, the PF government was the most corrupt of all the governments we have had. So 10 months down the line, you can accuse the UPND of being more corrupt? Look, the system that the UPND is using, 
It's not different from that of the PF. Corruption is going to deepen. Corruption has been deepening in this country. It hasn't been reducing. From the mid-80s when the, 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 the UNIP got into a structural adjustment program, started, on a, started to embark on a new liberal path, corruption has been deepening. It hasn't been reducing. Even with the intensifieds under the Manawasa government, corruption did not go. It has been growing and growing and growing. And all the signs that the PND has fallen into that trap are there. Make, what have they changed? But, but, but make me understand in, in how, terms of institutions, how, how, you, what can, have they how you can predict this, um, especially that probably they are the first administration to try and fully decentralize development to trickle down with their CDF and how they're executing that. So that we avoid these bureaucracies. Look, in still, whatever they are doing is still under the neoliberal economic policies that were pursued by the previous regimes and these these are even deepening that and with the deepening of neoliberal economic policies corruption is also going to deepen do we see the them, system do, is do, in, we, do we see the them system, inflating prices the, the on, system, on, on contracts the awarding cadres contracts the system is inherently corrupt the system is inherently corrupt mark my words i'm not maligning anybody I'm simply saying the system that they have embarked on, that they are using, that they have not changed, will produce nothing but corruption. They have not changed. There are no institutional changes. Reshuffling individuals does not change the system. You take out citizen A, you bring citizen B. Are you saying the same what system. the UPND should have done is fire everybody they found? No, it's claims? not individual. It's the system. system. The economic system. The political system, the social system has not been altered. There's nothing that has changed. There are no institutional reforms. So what is wrong with our current... Tell me, what institutional what, reforms? What, what, what is wrong with our current, you know, uh, uh, procurement systems when uh, obviously there are reforms within the, the Procurement Act, uh, there's issues of the public finance, uh, you know, management act and so on in trying to bring you know, uniformity in procurement prices, indices, and so on. And, and, and obviously, just the tone, even of the head of state, where he's not condoning even just his own party members. There's, no, there's no leader who says, I'm going to run a corrupt government. <laughs> even Mobutu never said that. The most corrupt regime on the continent that we have known, we all grew up with, never said they were corrupt. Have you ever heard any politician who says, I'm going to run a corrupt government? or I'm corrupt. They will talk about corruption or ending corruption or being anti-corruption when they are corrupt themselves. If you, what we witnessed in the previous regime was this, the stealing of petty cash, you are going to see much more bigger deals. These are actually selling the country. They are selling the country. Where is the evidence, Dr. Member? Because... Um... No, look. Look at the way transnational corporations are being treated in this country. The same bandits who robbed us of our sovereignty, who robbed us of our dignity, who humiliated us, are back. Anglo is back in this country. Anglo is the successor of BSA, which colonized us, which killed our people for the same minerals. Look at the way they were dealing, they're dealing with them. Today, we have uh, people from State House being part of the Anglo-Americans the, the Anglo Foundation, the Brentard Foundation, going to monitor elections in Kenya. People from State House, they are going on a delegation of Anglo to monitor elections in Kenya. How? Well, pr pr President Hitchlema, first of all, Dr. Membe, has never denied, especially when he went for the Greg Mills you know, book launch, that even before he was president, he was a member of the Brenthurst and he was friends to these people. What is the history of Anglo in this country? They, they, run, they run mines, but my question then, you know, Dr. Membe, is at this level of geopolitical dynamics across you know, the world. No country can exist in isolation. 
uh, obviously you need to return your sovereignty, but you need multi and bilateral. There's a difference you know, between relations. cooperating with others if, and if being puppets of others. Question, what is wrong if the UPND, who are capitalist in nature, or liberal uh, capitalists, as you call them, different from your ideology of socialism, what is wrong with them asking partnerships and FDI with Americans, uh, the Anglo-Americans, and, and, and others? The same way you get partnerships with Venezuela, Chile, you know, uh, 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 and other socialist you know, movements. What, what is wrong when you do that, or what is right, and what is, why is it wrong when the UPND do that? There's a difference between cooperation and being puppets. Don't forget, we were first colonized by a mining company. Don't forget that. We were first colonized by a mining company in 1891. We were first colonized by a private investor, a foreign investor, in 1891, Cecil John Rhodes, and this company, the BSA, which was later taken over by Anglo. Oppenheimer continued with the same policies for 33 years we are under direct company rule for 33 years from 1891 to 1924 and also this BSA this Cecil Rhodes killed our people they killed more than 10,000 Ngonis they killed the Prince, Prince Nsingu the commander of the Ngoni warriors they killed the old man in prison they stole over 10,750,000 ,000 animals there's no compensation to the Ngonis. Nobody's talking about that. The same companies, Anglo, look at the destruction on the copper belt. They have destroyed the lives of our Lamba people. No compensation. Today the Lambas don't have their land. Their river, their streams have been polluted. Their culture is destroyed. No reparations. What benefit did Anglo give? In all these years it has been mining on the copper belt. What did it give to our Lamba people other than the destruction of their lives? Look at the destruction of the lives of the Lenja people, the Sori people and their cultures. What compensation have them been given? If the Anglo had conducted itself well, would we be where we are today? What policies did Anglo support all these guys? With, all with these respect years? to the historical background, and thus you know, somebody only a puppet can become. With respect to the historical background to bed, that you, you know, give, with, with Anglo and you know, the way this government is going tonight, let's now talk about your allegations of now. Where is the proof that the new Dawn administration is auctioning, you know, this country? Because it's only 10 months. The problems happening at Mopani uh, with Glencoe were left, you know, by the PF. You have an arbitration issue at KCM with Vedanta, with, you know, the former liquidator. Um, the UPND have found, you know, Lumwana. Uh, they've found Kansanshi. They've found Kalumbila in the hands of First Quantum. So, the, the, uh, where are these claims coming from that they've auctioned the country, really? We have Africa. Mm -hmm. All the successful government have refused to have Africa here. What is Africa coming for? Why are the Americans opening an office here? And we know from the experience of Ghana that there's no difference between an office and a base. Since when did the Americans protect our sovereignty? Since when did they protect our interests? What are they coming for here? Who is bringing them here? Can an anti-imperialist regime do what they are doing? We are a laughing stock on the continent today. We are is quickly drifting into a banana republic. The, 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 these allegations are, are, are coming they are out too, They are too, not too allegations, they are facts. The, the, the issues of AFRICOM as an example, um, it's been established that 
this similar type of operation or office is not only similar or unique to Zambia or Ghana. They've got about over 34 plus, you know, operations in regions where they're trying to beef up, you know, global, you know, security based on on, on UN recommendations. Global security where for Africa, no where UN Africa, resolution where that Africa is still saying we need to be part of Com the Security Costa, Council. Comrade Costa, there is no UN resolution establishing Africa. Mm. Today, if you, 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 you read, there is a bill in Congress that is being debated to ensure that you know our sovereignty is taken away. We cannot decide on how we deal with Russia. They will penalize you for dealing with Russia. They are setting laws that go beyond the borders of their country. Who has given, which UN resolution has given them that mandate? You, well, apart, Africa apart, apart, is, apart, not, is not a UN uh, agency, uh, it's uh, an American uh, uh, entity. As uh, I said, as a matter of strengthening you know, global security. But for, what for, for, the, for security, the US, what in global for the US, security, US, for the US to set up, security. for the US to set up that, obviously they are bilateral MOUs, just like in Ghana and, 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 and anywhere else. So they don't put a gun to anybody's sovereignty and say, sign this, do they? We accept to sign it. Why do you see it as a danger? It, Russia. Yes. Russia is yes, setting up bases the, the, elsewhere. France what, is setting up bases in Mali. Is why hasn't that been questioned? What, what happened to France in Mali? Mm. Why hasn't that been questioned? What happened? We are the same what, Africans. What has happened to France in we Mali? are the same Africans, Doctor Member, that are buying arms or complain to say the U.S. is not intervening in Boko Haram in Nigeria. Just recently, Nigeria signed over um, a ten, you know, million dollar arms deal with the U.S. What has happened to the French troops in, in mm. Mali? Are you aware? They have been kicked out. Why did the AU refuse this African deal? Why did the SADC refuse this African deal? Why are many countries on this continent that are dignified, that believe in their sovereignty, refusing this, opposing this? When did the Americans protect our sovereignty? We fought for our liberation. From who? Where were the Americans? They were on the side of apartheid. They were on the side of the minority white regimes in, in Rhodesia. They were on the side of the Portuguese colonialists in Mozambique, in Angola, in Guinea-Bissau, in Cape Verde. Today, the Americans have become the protectors of our sovereignty. Today, the Americans have become our liberators. Our own liberation organizations, our own people who took up arms, and the Mukontoesis were an army founded by Mandela, and the Zipra founded by Nkomo, and the Zanla founded by Mugabe, and the Swapo founded by Sam Nyoma, a plan founded by Sam Nyoma, we are classified as terrorists. People liberating themselves. People liberating themselves. They even forget that the American independence also they hmm. was achieved with firearms. But, but, but presently, of course, we know we are not at war. And for a long time, uh, you know, post-independence, there's been all this spy and multilateral, you know, foreign relations at, at, at many levels. Comrade Costa, just, just allow me, to, just, just, just allow me to, to, to ask, what is your grave concern? Especially for a Zambian watching right now who has other issues of putting food on the table. Why are you so concerned about this African issue when we get antiretroviral drug support from, you know, PEPFA through the United States government? We do joint military, you know, uh, assistance on so many projects with the U.S. We don't have problems with this. We get education support. We get grant-aided support. So in a way, nearly... They give us aid and we don't have a problem with it. F make the Zambian understand why you have grave concerns and the repercussions of this African that you talked about. How does it affect me as an ordinary citizen? Look at what they did to Congo. Look at what they did in Congo. What it, look at what they did to the Congolese people. Who killed Patrice Rumumba? Who killed Patrice Rumumba? They killed Patrice Rumumba. 
Look at what the destruction of Libya. Who killed Gaddafi? They killed Gaddafi. Look at Ghana. Who toppled Nkrumah? They toppled Nkrumah. Who killed Amilcar Cabral? They killed Amilcar Cabral. We can also say they killed Samora. Wherever they have been, is there peace? The entire NATO for 20 years they were in Afghanistan. Have they brought peace to Afghanistan? The USA and the NATO were in Afghanistan for 20 years. They have run away from that country completely ruined. They went into Iraq lying to the whole world that there were mass, uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, in Iraq, which were not there. It was a lie to invade Iraq. What is Iraq today? Is there peace in Iraq? Is there stability in Iraq today? They have invaded Syria. Is there peace in Syria today? They have been to Somalia before. They have bombed Somalia before. The USA has bombed Somalia before. Is there peace in Somalia? They were on the side of separatists, separatists in Ethiopia. We know how they were stabilized in Ethiopia. But, 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 but much, much can be said about those examples. And so on goes... So we should ignore And so on goes to the other side of people with socialist kind of, you know, systems that have dictatorial tendencies and so on. Why, why should the U.S. and NATO stay aloof if you've got dangers of people like Kim Jong-un and nuclear weapons in North Korea? People violating human rights of their own people North Korea, and conducting North, mass killings. North Korea has got bases here. Is it, is it, is it, is which, it, which is it, is it okay for other countries like, like Russia to invade, you know, Ukraine and the whole international community under the UN should, should just look at it? And stay aloof. Let's look at facts. Mm. Let's put even first the Ukraine issue aside because it's very new. Did you rise up in the same way? Did you say the same things when they invaded Iraq? Did you say the same things when they invaded Afghanistan? Did you say the same things when they invaded Libya? Did you say the same thing when they invaded Syria? Look at the way they are treating the Iranians. What basis does North Korea have anywhere in the world? North Korea, Despite yes. Despite that, a big danger. A danger to who? Are they the only country with the nuclear weapons? We have, we have Pakistan has got nuclear weapons. We have got India has got nuclear weapons. We also know that Israel has nuclear weapons. They have nuclear weapons. Who gives them the monopoly? of having nuclear weapons. How many countries have got nuclear weapons in the world? Okay. Why shouldn't others have? Do we want nuclear weapons? We don't want nuclear weapons in any country. We'll be very happy today if all countries are freed from nuclear weapons. If all humanity is freed from nuclear weapons. Why should they be concerned about North Korea having nuclear weapons when there are other many countries that are not even stable, that have got nuclear weapons. But does, are these, are does, these countries North, that you talk about Korea, testing regularly the way North Korea is testing and putting, you know, military risks and, and, and alerts as, as these other countries you talk about? Are we having problems here because of North Korea today? Good question. If, if, if that is your answer on... No, are we having problems? You, it's not so, an answer, it's a question. Yeah, so, so, so my question then, Dr. Member, would be, for a Zambian out there who's concerned about the cost you know, of petrol and diesel, a Zambian out there who's concerned about the food basket, um, wh why should Africa, why should Zambia be caring about... Can, uh, can, just hold, let me finish. Why should the Zambians right now be concerned about an African debate, about a pro-Western investment debate, or even about a gay or lesbian right allegation because what they're looking for is food on the table. How will these things change their welfare tomorrow? Can a colony fully develop itself? Can people who are, whose sovereignty 
is not there fully develop themselves. Mm. Do we need independence? Do we need to be independent? Why did our forefathers fight for the independence of this territory? Why did the Wangoni ancestors resist the capitalist penetration, the taking over for their land, their minerals? Why did they resist? Why did these 10,000 young Wangonis die? Why did the Commandant Singh die? Why did the old man in prison die? Why did all these people who fought for our liberation die? Is independence not worth it? Why do we celebrate it every 24th of October, if it's not that important? Why did people pick up arms and die to liberate their, 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 their territories, to liberate their homelands, if it's not important to defend that sovereignty? Can a colony really develop? Can you have meaningful democracy in a country that is controlled by another country? To have democracy, to have development, you need to be independent. A country that is sub subordinate to another country cannot be democratic, cannot have meaningful democracy. Just for the sake of time and moving to other you know, critical areas, why should this AFRICOM discussion be, be tabled? Why is it important? Don't we have other you know, critical domestic matters to, to, to look at? We should do, ignore it. Let them come and do what they want in this country until when the side effects of it, the negative effects of it arise, is when we should stand up. For now, let's leave it. It's okay. We shouldn't talk about it. How should we approach it? No, I'm asking. You, you said, why should we worry about it? So, if we shouldn't worry about it, it means we should not talk about it. It's not an issue. They can come and do whatever they want, set up whatever they want. Until when there are problems, is when we should talk about it. For now, there are no problems. We have no right, we have no duty to foresee what certain policies will lead to. How should Zambia certain... be approaching this matter? We don't want those bases here. Zambians should put pressure on their government to ensure that the Americans do not have the military presence they want to have in our country. In, the same, in, in the same vein... We can cooperate with them mm. the way they cooperate. You, you make it Look, very clear that let, you don't want let, it. Let, let mm. me tell you, mm. we were threatened before. Our national sovereignty was threatened badly in the late 70s by the white Rhodesian forces and the South African apartheid regime. We were being bombed here. We went, Kaunda went to the Americans. Grey Zulu was the Secretary of Defense at the time, also and, and the, literally number two, tried to secure arms from the Americans, from the British, to defend ourselves from the white Rhodesians. They refused. In the same, but now let me yeah. finish this point. It's important. Mm. The, the UNIP government approached the, the Russians to sell them. They were not seeking assistance. They were seeking just purchase of jets and so on. They approached the Russians. The Russians did not give them. The only people who came to our aid with MiG-21s were the Chinese. They gave us a squadron of MiG-21s to just help us repel the white Rhodesians who were bombing here at will. And those MiG-21s are still here. They also gave us some tanks. These were the Chinese who gave us. We did not pay for them, they gave us. China of that time was not the China of today with immense resources. They sacrificed to give us that, to defend ourselves. The people who are coming to defend our sovereignty today refuse to help us. We have our people who died here, Ali Kinkata, was killed by the, the white Rhodesians. This Ali Kinkata you talk about was bombed. An innocent Zambian killed by the white Rhodesian forces. Like I said, in, where, in, in a, where in, these people in, who have in, come in, today? In a similar manner, the doctor members, we come to today's issues. I appreciate you giving a historical perspective. Is it priority right now, with all the economic hardships and the domestic issues affecting us, should these issues, you've answered to say outrightly we need to oppose AFRICOM. You've heard in the, in the recent past, I think two to three weeks, it had to take the president 
at a funeral in a church and this debate has surged on the vice president last week fried on the floor of parliament again i ask this issue of gay rights why is it becoming an issue of prominence within the global sphere this issue of flags in zambia and so on what is your take on this as a socialist movement they bring their agendas to us they bring their problems to us they have got problems with russia we should be involved in that who are these the same people you are talking about who are flying flags they have problems with china they bring us into that they have their agendas of gay issues and so forth we should be part of that their problems their issues should be our problems should be our issues our problems are not their problems our challenges are not their challenges our issues are not their issues this is the, these are their issues if they have got problems with russia leave let them leave us out if they have got problems with china it's not our problem with china if they have got issues with the gay rights and so on, those are not our issues. And they should not drag us into those issues. We do not have a problem with those issues. We have no issues with the issues of gay rights. We have no problem with China. If there is any problem with China, it's something we can deal with. If there are problems with Russia, it's something we can deal with on our own. So if so, I'm getting you correctly, you would prefer that we're dealing more with Russia, China, or the BRICS no, than the I'm Western... Not, I'm not saying deal with this one or with that one. Mm. Choose, we should be free to, do, to deal with anybody the way we want. Mm. We are a sovereign country. We're supposed to be a sovereign country. Let's choose our own friends. It's not the Americans or anybody to choose our friends. It's not the right of the Russians, the Chinese, or the Americans to choose our friends for us. We are a nation. We are people. We choose our own friends. It's like me telling you to, to choosing friends for you. Mm. Is that right? Mm. Even your father or your mother cannot even choose your friends for you. Why should the Americans come and choose our friends for us? And tell us if we deal with Russia, these are the punitive measures. This mentality should change. These friends of ours, these brothers and sisters of ours, need to respect us also. We are people also. Mm -hmm. We have a sense of dignity also. V very clear on that. For the yes. sake of time, I want to move to economic issues surrounding debt and the budget. Um, the Ministry of Finance has already started uh, calling in for submissions from stakeholders such as yourselves as a party. We still have the $1.4 billion you know, dollar, you know, uh, 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 bailout package with the IMF still somewhere hanging, you know, Know, uh, in the corners um, I think uh, in the last two months what excites this administration is coming out of you know Cape Town and the mining in pronouncements by first quantum minerals that they'll invest in the expansion projects to those tunes of about 500 million dollars in the nickel plant and also their their future towards electric motor vehicles are you seeing this economy slowly beginning to get back you know on on, on its wheels and I'd also like to get your views both as an economist but also as a journalist Th there's this debate surging of you have fuel prices and, and and every economic fundamental in the red but inflation is coming down and nobody seems to be explaining this properly let's start from where you started yeah. the mining in mm. in Cape Town mm. who organizes that in the... do you know the organizers of that in the... I'm asking. Well, you're explaining. No, I'm asking. Who are the organizers? What are their objectives? Who attends? Who do they invite? Who was there? What was the objective? Again, the same mining corporations. The same mining corporations. For the benefit of whom? Our benefit or their benefit? Since when did they become so generous to us? Look at the damage they have done to us. Look at the benefits that have accrued to them over the centuries. Have their methods of dealing with us changed? No. They have not changed. They have not changed. Today, the same mining corporations want to govern our countries. 
Anglo is deep into the governance issues. They have a foundation that is sponsoring puppets in South Africa, puppets in Zimbabwe, puppets here in Zambia, puppets in Congo, puppets in Uganda, puppets in Kenya, puppets in Malawi. The same way they started. When you say puppets, are you saying President Hitchilama is a puppet of Anglo-American and the West? Yes. This is the puppet regime. This is an imperialist regime. It's wrong. It's it's wrong to be, to affiliate to certain membership. You're affiliated to so many things. I mean, your 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 socialist training happens in South Africa. You've got friends across the world. Is it only good for you to be friends with others and you're not called a puppet? Why should you call President Hitler a puppet? They are puppets of Anglo-American cooperation. And you're not a puppet of the I'm socialist. Not a of what, what makes the difference? What have we sold here? You're not in power, so you cannot sell anything. Who finances us? Tell us. What did we get from anybody? But you have friends. That's undeniable. Yes. That's undeniable. Having friends, look, they are friends. I cannot go to be a friend with somebody who killed my people, who robbed my country. What has Anglo done to this country? Which other entity has done more damage to this country than Anglo? Other than maybe the BSA company that was before it. Yeah. Which company has looted us? Who robbed us of our minerals? Who robbed us? The damage Anglo did to this country is irreparable. Any dignified person cannot go and become a friend of Anglo. But it's a choice. People, it's a choice of human Yes, being. and we have the right to say this cannot happen to on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Anglo cannot be the darling of this country. And Anglo is not coming here as a darling to us. Yes, they are dying to those who, who, who dine with them. They are dying to those who dine with them. Why should Anglo be so interested in the governance of our country? Why should Anglo be so interested in the governance of Zimbabwe? Why should Anglo be so involved in the governance of Malawi, of Uganda, of Kenya? Why should they try to influence who become our leaders? Same reason why China, Russia, India will have reason to be interested in partnering with us on roads and projects and giving us is Anglo a country? because they're looking for copper. Is, is Anglo a country? Obviously, through you know entities, they are participating. China is participating in the copper trade of this country and, and stocking piles and piles of copper. Which government has China brought in here? Mm. Which government in Africa has China brought in? Which government has Russia brought in? Which government have they toppled other than toppling the colonial regime? Yes, they helped us to topple colonialism. Mm. So uh, back Beyond to Beyond that, show me one back, government. Back to my question. So what do you say about these investments into the mining sector, like the one I gave as an example announced by First Quantum? Are we slowly getting back to ramping up the 3 million tons of copper in the next 10 years per annum that the UPND is preaching. I want you to also tackle the issue of this, you know, what a difference is reducing it, what a inflation. Is it, is it benefiting? I'll deal with that. Yeah. What a difference is it going to make? Creation of jobs, mining, mining. creating an industry into the electric motor vehicle. Costa, mining did not start yesterday. Mm. Let's look at the history. Mining started in the early 1900s. By the same people are coming back by the same people we are dealing today, with the same entities we are dealing today with. Where are we? Where are we? More than 100 years of mining. Where are we? We are talking as if mining is starting tomorrow. What major changes have been made in the way mining is conducted? What fundamental changes have been made? have been made so that we benefit from this mining. And if you are looking for jobs from mining investments, forget it. Those um, big armies of mine workers we used to have will never see them again. Mining has changed, technology has changed. Today one small excavator costing $30,000, $40,000 wipes out 2,000 jobs, 3,000 jobs of miners. If you are looking for jobs from mining, you will not get them. What we need is to get fair taxes from mines. We need to get fair taxes from mines so that we pump those fair taxes into education, 
into health, into peasant agriculture. Isn't it good news that when we look at the future, uh, I saw you talk about this in one interview, the, the, the future of electric motor vehicles, the fact that we've got most copper and cobalt in the world, that FQM is expanding their you know, production capacity to, to exactly do that for Zambia, what create a, industry. What we is are signing MOUs with Congo and Zambia what for a, us to position ourselves to supply those what, batteries. What are we going to get out of this? Mm. Show me the deals that have been struck. Mm. Show me the memorandums that have been signed. Assembly and plans and, and, and have and, uh, you seen the agreements that are there? Mm. Do you know who is, how it's going to be structured? Who is going to own that? What taxes will accrue from that? Have you seen all that? Let's not claim his victories. Let's not be excited with all the things that appear to be new. Mm -hmm. these, we have been dealing with these people for a very long time. We have not benefited. We keep on fooling ourselves all the time. Let's sober down. Let's avoid this unnecessary excitement. Yeah. We, are not new, we are not new to these people. They are not new to us. Mining is not new. Manufacturing is not new. We have seen all these things in the world. They have eluded us from time to time. Let's sober down. Let's not mask difficulties. These people are not coming for us. They are coming for themselves. We are in a weak negotiating position all the time. How strong are we? What have we agreed? Let's be clear about things. In life, it's important to be clear about things. What is on the table? You are talking about electric batteries or whatever, cars and so forth. You have not seen even any deal, any plan of that. And this is the problem, you know, of getting excited with just even an idea. You started to run it as if something but surely, materialized. Should we not as a country be taking advantage of this let's anticipated look, let's boom? Look, let's look the, at what the, the, the current the state table. of the mines, Dr. Membe, there's no production at KCM, there's no proper production at Mopani. Shouldn't we be going into that direction? The people of the Copper Belt need a lifeline. We are not saying there should be no investment in the mines. What we are saying is Except it shouldn't be Anglo. No, I'm not saying they shouldn't be Anglo. Let's look at every deal that is there. Put everything on the table for people to see for themselves, to analyze things for themselves and come to their conclusions. For the Even sake of you, mm. a very well-informed journalist, what do you know about these investments on the copper belt? I'm in politics. What do I know about the investments? What have they disclosed to us? What have they disclosed to you? Maybe you're an investigative journalist. Tell us what you have dug out. Show us what is there for us to get excited. We have been on this path for a long time. This is not the first government to promise so much investment. Over the last 30 years plus, we have been on this path. The Chiluba regime was there privatizing inviting foreign investment and so on where are we i want us to end on the issue of this budget call for the 2023 you know budget cycle you have a very robust you know think tank mechanism that always releases these economic papers you know under the socialist you know economic arm what will your submissions be with the things i've mentioned the imf deal pending the fact that there's so much you know uh, crowding out of the private sector based on treasury bills and bonds and government you know borrowing to pay consumption but furthermore i still want you to tackle this you know inflation issue because i think people are interested in bread and butter issues and the cost of living yeah yeah look any student of political economy, not just mere economics, but political economy, will tell you that we have two economies. There's the real economy that is based on the goods being produced. There's the what we may call, for lack of a better word, an artificial economy that just deals with the exchanging promises. And you make money. Today, you can incorporate a company saying there's uranium found in Chongwe. And that company starts to sell shares. 
because they believe you know the grade of uranium is very high in Chongwe that you have found. You list that on the stock exchange, you started to make money. People, it may take 10 years to actualize that project, but shares are being exchanged. No production at all. Then later on in the ninth or eighth year, they realized actually the grade, the grade of the uh, uranium we're talking about in Chongo is of very low quality. So that project will not take place. You had all this economy that was created, all these businesses, so people have made money from the artificial economy. What you are seeing with the figures of inflation being bandied around, it's not coming from the production of goods and the services being traded. It's coming from simply playing around with monetary issues. The money supply, you reduce it, and so on. You suppress a bit of demand for the kwacha, for the dollar, and so on. That pushes your exchange rate a bit lower. That also helps lower inflation, and so on. Have you reduced the cost of living? No. Are prices really, really coming down? The way inflation has been so coming down. So what benefit, how do we explain this inflation? No, no, no. You, you go to the shops, mm. you buy. Have prices been coming down the way the rate of inflation has been coming down? Or prices have been going up? On the real economy, prices have been going up. So there's no reason for anybody to boast to say inflation is coming down no, let's as not, a good economic let's indicator. Not get, let's not get it. Finally, finally, one of your beliefs is that, and, and I remember this clearly under your campaign messages, that the socialist approach was to give Zambia for the first time a scenario where a poor person, or Abapina as you call them, to rule themselves. That's what you believe in, mm -hmm. is that the poor will rule themselves. Mm -hmm. With this increment of CDF from 1.7 or is it 1.6, you know, billion kwacha to 25.7, you know, uh, I mean, million rather, has this not addressed the issues of decentralization and every penny going to the poor people in that there's a percentage, 60% going towards community projects, another, you know, 20% going towards women empowerment, another to youth and secondary schools. And the fact that there's confirmation in every constituency that these monies have hit their accounts for the first time where others have not received CDF in more than two parliamentary terms. Is this not speaking to what decentralization we're talking about? Comrade Costa mm. will be the happiest people if the living conditions of our people improve. Anything that improves the living conditions of our people, that reduces their burdens, is welcome to us. But also, let's separate reality from illusion. Let's separate also intentions from actual reality. What is being done is being presented as if it's new. People are told to form cooperatives. Thousands and thousands of cooperatives are being formed. We were through this path in 1967. UNIP did it in 1967. It was a disaster. Cooperatives are not easy to run. You are running a company here. Is it easy to run? You can just wake up and run a business, run a cooperative. The cooperatives that UNIP formed in 1967, the failure rate was so high. It was a disaster. It takes time for people to know how to run a cooperative. Where have those cooperators been trained? How have they been prepared to run those cooperatives? And have they actually accessed that money? All those who have formed cooperatives have been given money. They have the money to run those cooperatives they, they were given or they were told to form. It took time until the late 70s to the early 80s when the cooperative college was formed to train people on how to run cooperatives. What is being suggested, even as I will re review a failure of the Socialist Party, we started 
some form of cooperatives some two some two years or so ago in one of the compounds here we pushed men into those cooperatives we did not sufficiently prepare people it was reduced to zero we failed we failed and we had pushed in you know good uh, business managers bankers and so on to try and help these people but it failed so the cdf will be a flop i don't see it succeed is it a good move to increase the allocation and probably try to trickle down Look, administration of projects and funds populist moves don't yield much sometimes be careful with these populists so what should be the approach how do we trickle down development down we, to the grassroots we, we said i can't speak for them on their, their manifestos they didn't promise in their manifesto they didn't promise to develop the country in that way it was a private sector based they were creating jobs with the private sector they were not going to create jobs definitely with the public sector today we are seeing them talking so much about 3000 jobs of teachers 11000 jobs of house workers you go and check them but surely this is equity that you give everybody no, a share go and look at their manifesto mm -hmm. even the implementation of that is running into problems they got excited with the 1.3 billion mm -hmm. That was uh, authorized last year under the special drawing rights mm -hmm. for every country. It got we got 1.3 billion. They thought they could use that uh, to pull a fast one on jobs. They were told, no, you can't use this money to employ everybody. They are starting on employing people because they have to retire some people to get. This IMF loan is being held back for a number of reasons. One of the reasons. This is subsidies. The input, the agriculture input, they have to be scaled down or go. There are still some levies that they don't agree with on the fuel. There are issues of ZESCO that need to be cleared. It's better our people are told the truth. We were being told this is done. Why? What is dragging it? Do we in need September it? you have the euro bond maturity. Do we need the IMF bailout? Ghana has moved out of that program. You are aware. We were using Ghana the example of where we should go on an IMF program. Ghana now wants to go it alone. They have pulled out. So we don't need it. They have pulled. No, ask the Ghanaians. Who well, we were using as an example. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. We've exceeded our one hour. We wish to discuss more, but thank you for talking to us tonight. Time has moved so fast. Indeed it does. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.